Hello and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Luminar 4. I wanted to do a high-key black and white uh, portrait today, so without any further ado, let's get started. I'm starting out in Photoshop, but you could start out in Luminar 4 as a standalone as well, but uh, this is my workflow, so I'll show it to you. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer, and that's Command or Control J. That duplicates the background layer. This way we can work non-destructively. Come up to Filter, and I'm going to come to Luminar 4. We'll go ahead and give that a launch. The first step in Luminar for me is to come up here to AI Enhance. And let's give it a little bit of AI accent just to, just because it makes it look better. I really love AI accent. Maybe something like that. Okay. And then secondly, I want to go to AI structure. Now, the cool thing about AI structure is when you're working on a portrait, the artificial intelligence is going to know where the face is and things like that. So it's only going to add structure to, like, say, the clothing and the hair and things like that. So let's try this. Let's take the AI structure because I want to, this is going to be a black and white, so I want to have a lot of nice structure in here. So let me go ahead and pull up the structure a good bit. And you, as you can see there, it's not affecting the face at all and that's really really great I love that now it's time for a black and white conversion so we're still in the essentials tab here so let's open up black and white conversion convert to black and white and right right off the bat that looks really nice now, there's not a whole lot of color in this image um, I know there's red tones so let's play with the red slider here and adjust the luminance values of red I might just open those up a little bit let's play with yellow Maybe like there, and uh, no green. Might be some cyan in here. Yeah, there's a little bit of cyan. I'm going to darken down the cyan, and let's see if there's any blue. Yeah, there's some blue in here too, so I want to darken down the blue a little bit. We're off to a good start. Now let's go into the uh, portrait um, tab here, and I'm going to come to high key. And let's play around with this high key here. So let's start off with the amount. And let's pull that up. And that's giving me a nice high key look with some really nice contrast in here. So I'm going to come up to around here. Let's open up the advanced settings as well. Okay, so let's play with the standard high key. That gets it even lighter. I might just pull that back a little bit. And let's work with the dynamic high key. So it's going to, like, it's more of an, uh, an intelligent high key, if you, if, you know, if that's a good word for it. It's only going to target certain areas, not everything. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Yeah, something like that looks good. Now we can play with our black tones. We can either uh, make our black tones uh, lighter and give it a more of a faded look, which is a nice look sometimes. So that's kind of nice like that. Or we can pour our blacks back and give us a more high contrast look here. And I think I might pull them back just a little bit and give us a, uh, more of a high contrast look. Now we also have a glow here so we can add a little bit of a glow to our image. It already has some glow to it, but we can play with that. And it was pretty good right where it was, I think. And now we can play with some contrast. Add a little more contrast in there and I think I might. Now the saturation, let's see if it affects us in any way. It does, actually, because there's still a saturation in this image, although we're not really seeing it here. But this will affect it. So, even though it is black and white now, we can still play with this a little bit. And I'm thinking maybe right around in there. Let's go ahead and toggle the high key uh, tool here so we can see the before and after. So, come up to this toggle right here, give it a click. There's the before and after. So, that's looking really good. I really like this high key look on this image. I'm really happy with it. Now, I'm looking at our model's eyes here, and I think what I'm going to do is go back to the black and white conversion tool. And there's blue in her eyes. I remember that. So I'm going to take this blue. I took the blue and moved it to the left to darken the background a little bit. So what I'm going to do is change my mind and move this up to the right. All right. And when I move it up to the right, you notice her eyes start to get a little bit of a sparkle in there. That's better. Now on to the next filter. Let's come to the creative tab here and let's go to color styles LUT. Now you may say, Dave, what the heck are you going into color styles LUT for? Well, this is a black and white conversion, but there's still color information in this file here. So 
even though it is black and white, when I hover through these LUTs, it will change the luminosity values of this image, which is go going to uh, give us different effects. So check this out. Let's go to Anaheim first. See the difference? Let's hover through some of these. So don't forget this. This is a beautiful tool, even on black and white images. It's not going to affect color, but it's going to affect the luminosity values of the image. So let's play through these guys and see what we like. And I love how you can just hover over them and you'll see the difference right before your very eyes. Uh, that one's not bad. I think the one I really like, believe it or not, was the very first one here, Anaheim. Or is it Bakersfield? Nah, you know what? I'm torn between Anaheim and Bakersfield. I'm going to go with Bakersfield because I like what it's doing with the eyes. Her eyes are a little bit lighter here. Now let's come in here and play around a little bit. So we can adjust the amount, increase it more, or take it back. Maybe you're right. It's pretty close right where it was, right around there. Let's see if we can give it some more contrast. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it some more contrast. And look at those eyes. They are sparkling. They're just looking right through me here. Now we can also adjust this color saturation here. And that's going to affect it too, as you can see. So, play with all the sliders. And I'm just looking at her face there and finding a spot that I kind of like. And I think it's right there. Now let's click the toggle. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's a lot. But look at the nice contrast increase we have here. I'm really liking that a lot. This image right now is uh, calling out to me saying, please give me some film grain. So black and whites and film grain, yeah, that goes hand in hand. So let's open up the film grain tool right here in the creative section. And let's just bump up the film grain here. Look at that film grain. Now this image just really looks great with film grain. I can zoom in here so you can really see the film grain. Let's toggle it off and on, off and on. There you go. So we can adjust this here. Let's go to advanced settings because we can also change the size. Now I like it just the way it is, but watch, we can make that film grain larger. Let's, let's give it more so you can really see it. So we can change the size of the film grain or make it smaller. Uh, but I liked it right at 20, I believe. And you can adjust the roughness of it too. Okay, so you can make it softer or more rough. I'm just going to double click it and set it back to the to the default position. And I'm going to pull this amount back. I just want a little bit in there. Something like around there. But isn't that cool? So let me click the toggle one more time. There's a before and after. Hopefully you can see that on your uh, computer screen. Okay, I like that. The film grain is looking really cool. This image also is calling for a vignette, so I'm going to answer that call and come up to the Essentials tab and come down to Vignette and um, click on Choose Subject, and I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to pull the amount down a good bit, even the whole way, and open up the Advanced Settings. And my little tip and trick here is to take the feather, move it the whole way to the left, so you can actually see the shape of your vignette. All right, now we can adjust the roundness, and I want it more of an oval like this. And let's pull the size in like so. I might want to move my, go to choose subject and move it over just a little bit. I wish you could pull and drag that around. You need to add that feature Luminar. If anybody knows how to do that, let me know. I'd love to be able to do that. Uh, to be able to just click and dra drag and move that vignette around, that would be cool. So now let's go ahead and take our feathering and start to move it to the right. So we start to feather that, and that looks kind of cool right there. And let's pour our mount back, because that is too much. But even like that, a nice strong vignette, it's kind of stylistic on this image. I think it looks pretty cool. But I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I might go... I'm adding a pretty strong vignette, but I want it. I want our uh, eyes to be drawn into our model and into her eyes. So I'm thinking right around there is looking nice. Now, and the feathering I think is good. Maybe I'll take it over a little bit more. Yeah, right around there. Now we can adjust the inner light if we wanted to make her lighter in the center. If we do, it's going to be ever so light because that can get really ugly fast. 
And I think it probably looks okay. I might just add just a little bit, you know, like a three. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now we could call it done right here. Um, in fact, I would probably save this out as a black and white right now. And then I would maybe bring it back into Luminar and add some, uh, maybe some split toning on it. But let's go ahead and play with split toning now. And there's also a photo filter that we can look at too. So let's see if these things will help us. Now we'll go under Pro. And in Pro we have a photo filter and split toning. Now either one of these are going to be good for adding some toning to your image. So let's go to photo filter first. I just want to show you. You can come here and take this amount slider and pull it to the right. And you can take it the whole way up and get really crazy with it. But if you just want to add a little bit of toning, you could take it to the right a little bit like this. And then you can come to the hue and you could shift that hue, like give it like a sepia tone. And that's a really quick and fast way to add a, a sepia tone to your image. And that looks really nice. And then you can pull this amount slider back if you felt you went too far. You also have a saturation control here that you can pull it back or pull it up. And I think that looks really nice. And I'm kind of liking that a lot. Let's go ahead and uh, shut this uh, filter off for now. And let's explore the split toning. Now the split toning works a little differently where it lets you tone the highlights and tone the shadows. Uh, let's tone, and sometimes I like to just split tone the uh, shadows and leave the highlights alone. For instance, if I wanted to get like more of a selenium tone type look, I would come to the shadows slider here and pull up the saturation and then get myself a nice blue color. And you can see the swatch changing here. You can even take the saturation up more and find that blue color that you really want maybe something like that and then just take the saturation back and watch just add a little bit of that blue tone to the shadows like that and that's beautiful let me toggle the split toning off and on see that just a slight selenium type look and I like that a lot or you might want to add a little bit of selenium or add a little bit of blue in the shadows and then come up to your highlights and let's pull this saturation up let's pull it up a good bit and let's pull this till we find a nice like orange tone, like a sepia type tone. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now let's pull the saturation back and just build it up slowly. So we have that little bit of a coolness in the shadows. And now we add a little bit of warmth up into the highlights. So maybe somewhere around there. Now let's play with this shoe a little bit more. Get it looking sepia. Somewhere right around in there, maybe. I'm still not happy with it. Here we go. I guess I just didn't have enough. Okay, that's looking kind of seepy there. Now let me pull the saturation back some. Maybe right around there. Now we can come with the um, with the balance, which is, where are you? The balance here, shadows. We can balance out between the shadows and the highlights. So we can favor the highlights more or favor the shadows more. So the sh the balance slider is really nice. Um, and all split toning filters have these. Photoshop has it, Lightroom, Affinity Photo. But the balance is nice. So you can just get it looking the way you like it. And, and I'm thinking somewhere around there looks good. And then you have an overall amount here. So you can bring this whole way up to the right and add more. It defaults at 50. So we might say... We want to be a little less of 50, so maybe somewhere right around in there. And that looks really nice right there. It's a subtle split toning. Let's uh, click the toggle. Here's the before and here's the after. Okay, let me shut it off and let's go back to the photo filter. And so you can see what the photo filter looks like again. So here's the photo filter on. And that looks really nice too. And here it is off. And so whichever one you like. And let's go back to split toning. And there it is. Well, a high key black and white portrait with a little bit of toning on at the end. Now we're complete. Now, if you're working in Luminar 4 as a standalone product, you're good. You don't have to do anything. Everything will be saved when you close out. Everything's good to go. But for me, I use Photoshop, so I got to come here and click apply. And that'll go ahead and bake all these adjustments into my image and send me back into Photoshop, as you can see right here. And so in Photoshop, this is layer one, my Luminar adjustment here. So if I click the eyeball, here's the before and here's the after. I love Luminar 4. It's such a great piece of software and it's really good for doing black and white 
uh, conversions and it has all those great filters like high key and the LUTs filter um, and it has Orton effects and it's just really an amazing piece of software so it's and it really helps you to get your creative juices flowing if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. This really helps my channel to grow. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, thanks so much for joining me on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly today. And I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.